Hello and welcome to the fifth part of the playthrough or walkthrough of L, a mathematical adventure for the BBC Micro. Um, in the last part, in part four at the end, I kind of lost track of time uh, and uh, ran over the limit for, uh, ran over the time limit. So I'm just backtracking slightly. Uh, we're plugging a tin bath, the holes in a tin bath, with the objects we found in the game so far. And I was just saying that the octahedron, uh, the octahedronal hole, can be plugged... Um, no, sorry, the square hole can be plugged with the octahedron. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Um, and you can see that here, uh, the shape, um, that particular orientation of an octahedron will plug a square hole. Um, so that's very good. And... Um, that's in fact what we did and we're now back uh, plugging the rest of the holes in the bath if we say use dodeca use the dodecahedron the diamond dodecahedron fits snugly into the small hole with five sides and of course you can look that up and see that in fact a dodecahedron will fill a pentagonal hole and what we then have to do, if we now, in fact, try to use the bath itself to get across the river, which is the ultimate aim of this exercise, we find that the bath won't carry much weight. You must take fewer things with you or you will sink. Um, not sure quite what the point of that is, but um, it might come back to me. What do we have left? What are we still carrying that we can drop to make ourselves lighter? We can, in fact, drop the bottle of blue liquid and the phial of pink liquid. And we need to keep the ore, I presume. Um, we can now use bath, but according to the walkthrough that I've been referring to, provided graciously by Darren, is our brother of Eddie, we can also do this. We can look bath. And that's just a bizarre little bit of syntax there, which I don't think you'd guess. But fortunately, use bath does also work, uh, because if you say use bath or look bath, the bath takes you safely across the river. You're on the north bank of the river, which is covered in brambles. A narrow path winds to the northeast. An old and rusty tin bath is lying on the bank. And we did it. We crossed the river. You're now next to the rusty bath. So, um, let's follow the path northeast. You're in a beautiful orchard and are surrounded by trees laden with many different kinds of fruit, some of which you've never seen before. Hmm, rather like that uh, Ceanothus or Ceanothus bush that I'd never heard of. Pardon my ignorance, please. There is a clearing in the centre of the orchard from which a path leads to the southwest, the way we just came. A man who looks very much like a gardener is scratching his head and mumbling to himself about a pile of young fruit trees lying on the ground. I have something here which you are going to need, he says. How does he know? He has never met us before. Imagine walking up to someone and the first thing they say to you is, I have something here which you're going to need. It's rather sinister. He continues, but first you must help me. The Drogos have given me firm instructions to plant these nine trees in the clearing so that there are ten straight rows with three trees in each row. I can't seem to do it. Can you help me? Again, I'm tempted to say no, but I will endeavour to be of assistance. You sound like Jeeves now. Um, uh, well, this does funny things to you, uh, doing a playthrough and talking endlessly to yourself. Uh, if anyone's listening to this when it eventually goes online, I'd um, uh, be very pleased. Uh, but don't feel obliged. Why am I saying that? If you're not listening to it, you won't be obliged. Anyway, here's the plan of the orchard. Plant nine trees in ten rows of three. Here's a plan, says the gardener. Say up, down, left and right to move about, and tree when you want me to plant a tree or remove one. We'll just use the letters U, D, L, R and T. And again, we have here a very clever puzzle, um, and it's quite satisfying. I know I've been uh, going on about how 
sort of random it is to um, encounter puzzle after puzzle, empty room after empty room, detailed empty room after detailed empty room in it for no particular reason that is apparent. Um, but in fact, puzzle fests like this um, can be satisfying, especially if it's um, played in a group. If a game like this is played in, by a group of people, it can be quite fun. And that's what I remember back in the day, back in the day. When I were a lad, um, when we played this at school. Anyway, um, this is. Uh, feel free to try and solve this yourself. Um, otherwise, just watch me as I amaze you with my use of a walkthrough, a pre prepared walkthrough to solve the puzzle. Um, there's a tree there, there's a tree there, um, and there's a tree there. And that's it. No, it isn't. Obviously not. Um, because we need ten rows of three. How do we achieve ten rows of three, you may be wondering. Well, I'll show you. It's quite a cunning little solution, I think and does require some lateral thinking and some um, experimentation, possibly. But if you follow this plan... Now, are there alternative solutions to this? I would be quite surprised, because there's a very limited plot of land, or configuration of green asterisks, um, in which to plant the trees or letter T's. Um, and so if there was more than one solution to this game, uh, to this puzzle, I'd be quite surprised. Um, and this is the solution, because you do have, in fact, ten rows there. Apart from the obvious vertical and horizontal ones, you've got the row formed by those three T's, for example, and also those three, and in the opposite direction, uh, the mirror image of those. Uh, and so it's all very clever and very good and satisfying. And um, the gardener shouts, you've done it! I thought it was impossible! So why did you... you so-and-so, you thought you were going to employ me on an impossible task and sort of work me to death? I don't like the people in this uh, game. Uh, I thought it was impossible, the gardener says. Now I have something to give you. The, really, uh, you could have phrased that differently, Association of Teachers of Mathematics. He hands you a rope ladder, phew, which is rolled up into a neat bundle. Then he walks away. How rude. In any case, we now have that rope ladder and um, a wooden oar and... Uh, we can uh, do something with it at some point, I presume. Um, how exactly he knows that we'll need that, I'm not sure. Is he the abbot in disguise? The gardener? Are they all one person? Who knows? There is, in fact, another puzzle fest of a game, more recent, which is Professor Layton and the Curious Village. If you've played that on the Nintendo... Uh, it's DS, I believe, originally. Um, and that's an incredible puzzle fest of a game. And I believe there are over 120 puzzles in the first game of that series, which is the only one I've played. And they are, some of them, fairly challenging, and some are easy, but there are a heck of a lot of them. And somehow it all works, because they put a lot of effort, actually, into the backstory. I mean, it seems very superficial, but when you eventually get bits of backstory revealed to you in cutscenes and then mainly at the end of the game, it, tie, it attempts to try everything up, in to, to tie up uh, all the loose ends and to tie all the puzzles you've solved throughout the game into a quite satisfying, if ludicrous, story. Um, which this doesn't attempt to do. And in fact, there's a very perfunctory end to this game, which we will eventually, I promise you, come to if I stop wittering on and just get on with it. Right. 
Um, the gardener gives you a rope ladder. Oh, sorry. Yes, we've done all this. Right. Shut up, shut up. Get on with it. Um, I have, in fact, um, uh, typed something into the wrong window here. I do apologise. This is terrible. I don't know what this is like to actually watch or listen to. I don't believe anyone ever will. Anyway, um, we're back on the bank of the river, the north bank of the river, and the old and rusty tin bath is lying here. Just out of curiosity, what happens if I... Oh, no, wait a minute. Um, what happens if... Oh, oh, it doesn't work like that. Okay. Uh, we will now attempt by saying look back. In fact, let me show you that you can say use bath as well, which is more logical, to go back across the river with the rope ladder. But, but, but... The bath won't carry much weight. You must take fewer things with you, or you will sink. Now, given that we only have two objects, one of which is the oar, um, and the, which we need to row across the river, and the other of which is the, lad, uh, the rope ladder we've just um, earned with our labour in the orchard with a mysteriously um, omniscient gardener, um, we don't want to give up either of them. So what are we to do? Well, a large ape lumbers up to you and asks, are you trying to get the ladder across the river by the way he can talk? We say yes, um, because we are. I would like to help you, but I'm a rather stupid ape who can talk. Now, if I was a wise animal like an owl who can talk, I might be able to help you. Perhaps you could turn me into an owl. I once turned a pig into a sty. Would you like to know how I did it? asked the ape. It could be quite a gruesome and horrific answer, if I say yes, but uh, here goes. Um, brace yourselves. Uh, well, said the ape, I did it bit by bit like this. Pig. Big. Bag. Sag. Say. Sty. It was very difficult, but you're much cleverer than I am, and perhaps you could change me into an owl. The ape climbs a nearby tree and sits on a branch. And this is a word game. And it's one of the few, if not the only word game, in the entire adventure. And is that correct, in fact? I'm just trying to go back and remember. Anyway, um, we... Yes, yes it's, just, it's just occurred to me. This is uh, unusual. Anyway... How do we do this? We begin by saying ape. Okay, says the ape. And then we say or. And of course the point is that we change one letter of the previous word to make a new word to get us closer to owl. And I wonder, in fact if it will accept multiple solutions. I know, in fact, it does accept at least two, because I remember the solution we actually used, because it was um, a solution that used a word that I didn't know at the time, which was all, which I've just typed in. So I've typed in so far ape, or, A-W-E, all, A-W-L, and of course you can now simply type owl. You can change the A into an O and type owl. Uh, there is, in fact, an alternative solution, which is ape, or, O owl, um, so that's O W E. Uh, so you can probably do it in more steps as well if the game understands the words. Anyway, the ape immediately starts to shrink and sprout feathers. In less than a minute, he's turned into a magnificent barn owl. He's kind of like Manimal, isn't he? If you remember that ancient, I'm I'm a very old man. I'm sorry for mentioning these things. Right, he flaps his wings a little uncertainly at first and then swoops down. With his talons, he snatches the rope ladder, flies off with it. Flies? Association of Teachers of Mathematics, I charge you with the crime of not knowing how to spell. He flies off with it towards the palace and soon disappears out of sight behind some trees. Hooray! And at this point, I will pause and see you in the next part, which I believe is part six of this playthrough, before I run out of time. See you then.